Hello everyone and welcome to quite possibly one of the most important book clubs that we will ever have in my entire lifetime. Regina, welcome to a literary analysis in The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Mm, 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 mm. Today's dream is one that is very close to my heart. Many hundreds of years ago, when I was a young ghost princess, I did in fact read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And upon reflection, it has some very interesting societal-wide ramifications and its impact on the young childhood psyche is frankly unparalleled. Let us begin with the opening. What did the Spiritinas think of the book, Spiritinas tell me? Um, certified kindergarten. Kindergarten. It was nostalgic. Mm, mm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. The book has a meaning that you need to read twice. Yes, I think one appreciates it in many more ways. Upon their reading centuries later. Yes, 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 yes. Book, did you write a book? I've written several, but you guys will never see them. We shall proceed to the literary analysis. And I believe that what better way to start with any work than to look upon the title of the work that informs one's first impression. This book is aptly titled The Very Hungry Caterpillar. What stands out to me is the use of the word the, the very hungry caterpillar instead of a very hungry caterpillar, instead of any other extremely hungry caterpillar, which to me implies that there is only one very hungry caterpillar, one to eclipse every other very hungry caterpillar. But what is interesting to me the book title does not focus on the very beautiful butterfly. It focuses on the pre-ascension state of the caterpillar. It focuses on the caterpillar at the very start of his journey and from the majority of his time during the book, even though the final form of the caterpillar is symbolically and allegorically and thematically and from a critical analysis standpoint, the most interesting form of the caterpillar because it informs us of the result and endpoint of the journey. The vast majority, probably approximately 80% of the the word count of this book is dedicated to detailing of what the very hungry caterpillar consumed. Yes, I have compiled a list of all the things that he consumed over seven days. What the caterpillar did eat was one apple, two pears, three plums, four strawberries, five oranges, one slice of chocolate cake, one ice cream and cone, one pega, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one slice of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, one slice of watermelon, and on the seventh day, one leaf. The focus of this story is eating, consumption. What does it mean, chap? It's about the temptation, starting and ending with a single thing. Exactly, this book goes through a cyclical nature of a consumption journey, starting with one apple, ending with but a single leaf. Only one singular leaf to match a single apple on the first day. Perhaps even evoking images of humans coming from dirt and then returning to dirt. We have at the core of the very hungry caterpillar, the idea of consumption. It is all the caterpillar does, leading me to analyzing the core theme of this tale as rapacious consumerism. There is nothing but consuming. It doesn't matter what he eats, he is still hungry. Single-minded consumption of the caterpillar is, is further highlighted by the absolute void of anything else in this book. Mm. Where are the other caterpillars? Where is his mother? What happened to everyone else? What happened to his thoughts, his feelings? his perspectives on the world, the absolute lack of anything else in this work except for the focus on hunger and eating shows that when one gives in to their desires completely, nothing else matters. It shows the selfishness of the caterpillar. The caterpillar becomes a victim to his own desires of hunger. Can we take our analysis a little bit further than just going consuming more than you need to and wasting food back? At the end of the book, the caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. What could it mean? Why would the caterpillar be rewarded for his own harmful conduct where he is simply selfishly gorging himself on very many foods? The fact that the caterpillar is rewarded for his behavior could perhaps imply that under a system of consumerism, those who succeed are not simply those who consume, but those who have the resources to consume. The caterpillar managed to turn into a butterfly, not simply because he was very, very hungry, but because he had the resources available to sate his hunger. You will notice that there is no mention of where the caterpillar got these foods. Perhaps that implies he didn't need to think about where he needed to get these foods from because he always had these resources available to him. Could this be a commentary on the setup of the world today? Perhaps, perhaps, I don't know, chat. <laughs> The other way that we can interpret the caterpillar's journey is as a metaphor for the human condition. For the caterpillar's non-ascended state is a metaphor for childhood and his post-ascended state is an allegory for being an adult. The caterpillar has to make mistakes and eat way too much in order to learn his self-control and eat simply a leaf before transforming and ascending, learning his lesson of self-control, leading to the reward and success of becoming a butterfly. Perhaps this shows us in our lives an inevitability of temptations and then having to learn through the consequences of our own actions. Those consequences will teach us so that we no 
know for a future that eating 10 things at once is bad and maybe just eat a leaf. Yes, yes, yes. Thus concludes my analysis of a very hungry caterpillar. Your brains are probably fried. Oopsies. Oopsies.